Over the years, we've been really lucky to be able to kind of associate ourselves with some killer bands. You know, Gojira, Doth, uh, Cannibal Corpse, as far as photography goes. In 2008, I got the chance to go to Arras, France, and work with Gojira um, and photograph their first show with Metallica, which was pretty amazing. And um, a lot of cool shots ended up coming out of that. It pretty much helped launch my music photography career and really kind of help the, the band, you know, be noticed as well. Alex Morgan Street 9 production is the fucking shit. <laughs> the wine bringer. He's playing bass. The, the wine bringer, yeah. Well, yeah. yeah. Andrew. Tell us what kind of wine he brought, because I really don't know what it is, but I heard that it's really good. Andrew brought a Chateau Margot. Yeah, yeah. It's a very, very good wine from France, so it was a nice surprise. We all, we all had a sip. It was good. You know what we're doing in Indiana. Don't forget that. Where the mice runs free, aka corn. So it was, I mean, it was a crazy year, 2000. 2007, 2008, 2009 were like a crazy three year, like, I can't believe this is happening kind of thing. Actually, we had quite a show with Doc. Uh, yeah, that's kind of how we got our foot in the door to even begin to talk to Mark Lewis. And uh, AI, I guess he, you know, he saw something that us knew that we were serious and we were good at what we did. How Doth and I really got connected was um, after they found out that I was working with Gojira, they were getting ready to release the uh, album The Concealers. And so Al hit me up and he's just like, hey man, I saw your work with Gojira and blah, blah, blah. Uh, we were really interested in you trying to get something maybe for the inside of this record, you know? And so I was like, okay. So I went to Atlanta and then we hung out and, and um, did like a two or three day photo shoot. And that's where you're gonna find the shots of like all the smoke, smoky portraits that are in, in the concealers record. Um, and then, I did the picture of Kevin like a zombie, like it's on uh, drummerkevintelly.com where uh, he's got a chainsaw and he's like standing over, he's got like blood everywhere and all that. And I did that on that trip and uh, pretty much all the promo for Doc at the time and uh, for the concealer. I went by and then we ended up, Al yeah, hooked me up with Mark Lewis from Audio Hammer Studios because Mark and Jason Sukoff ended up doing the concealers. So in the meantime, while I'm talking to him, about the concealer's record and getting all these pictures wrapped up. He's talking to Mark about us and trying to like help me out. I heard about the band through Al Levy from Doth, who works with me and Jason Sukoff at Audio Hammer now. Um, then he had a studio in Atlanta, and he's 
also the guitar player for Doth, who I've done two records with and a bunch of other a bunch of other stuff, some EPs and whatever it is that they've done, some some solo records, stuff like that. Um, and then Alex also did has done a lot of photos for Doth and uh, has now done the photos for the for our studio. So that's it. Sweet. Yeah, he's a great photographer. So Mark heard some of our demos and decided that he really liked them and we figured out how to coordinate go down to Audio Hammer and we laid down the uh, Still I Rise EP with Mark down at Audio Hammer. And uh, of course we were like super stoked because I mean, you know, from our area, I mean, Audio Hammer Studios at the time was something that I saw in, in all the videos, like the Roadrunner United DVD and stuff like that. So, I mean, for us to be recording there, we were stoked. Me personally, when I heard we were working with Audio Hammer Studios in Florida, I was just like, you're fucking kidding me, you know? I'd have to say that working with Mark Lewis was an amazing experience, and I think that Alex knowing the people he knew in Doth and getting to know all the relationships and networking we've gone through to build the relationships we've had got us the opportunity initially, but Mark Lewis is probably one of the you know top top guys to do this kind of stuff. Him and Jason Sukoff, they're just they're, put, they're putting out albums that are just crazy, like Whitechapel and you know Devil Driver and all kinds of cool shit. What you wanted, a halo of flames reaching out. Let's do the halo of flames again, I think. I know, I fucking I fucked it up. <laughs> He's gonna start ordering his drive-through shit like that. All right, cool. I, I, I need to make double. Uh, what are you selling? Alright. the life from your eyes! Let me hear that. Pretty good. Can you get one a little bit more brutal though? Yep. More flemmy, less raspy. Flemicus. Flemmy kill, mister. There we go. Pull the light from your eyes! Cool. Eyes! small tours and stuff like that for the Still I Rise EP. We wrote a bunch of other songs and this is the time where we started writing guitar parts for two guitar players for the first time. Because on the first album there weren't two guitar players, it was just John. We got Mike Van Bibber who used to jam with uh, Jeremy Spencer from Five Finger Death Punch. He's actually from Boonville, Indiana. And uh, so him and, and Joe Smith from Joe's Records here in town and Mike Van Bibber were in a band together called Nine Stitches back in the 90s. So uh, we call we called Bibs. So we, hit up, we hit up Bibs and we're like, hey, we're going to start writing for two guitar players. Like, And Chris Yokel was in Korea at the time. And so we were basically like, Chris is going to come back and join the band, but in the meantime, can you start helping us write for two guitar players and like, you know, fill in for him like for about a year until he moves back to Korea because he's in the Air Force. So um, he was like, yeah, and like, you know, stoked on that. I hope I don't get ran over. 
<laughs> it's uh, it's Roy. Hell yeah, he's got a tattoo of a man. Anyway, so Bibbs agreed to do that, and uh, so we played with Bibbs for about a year at the Still I Rise CD. Chris moved back. As soon as Chris moved back, we did uh, four dates with Doth um, on their third album tour, and. After all that happened, we ended up writing some more songs with Chris and then flew Mark back up to Indiana. So around this past summer, Alex decided that he was uh, just going to find out when Mark Lewis was going to be available to work on this new thing with us. And he actually got it worked out to where Mark would come fly up here and work with us. We had about a week's worth of time to get everything that we needed to do. So. We had to make sure everything was planned out and basically bust our asses and uh, get it together. I have to say that working with him here in, in Evansville was a cool experience just because you know I could just get off work and I could drive to the studio and you know say, hey Mark what's going on let's, let's get something done tonight and you know throw the tracks down and there you go and then and everybody gets to kind of just hang out you know so it was, it was really cool. I mean, you know, they have a good flow, um, they know what they want, and they, you know, they always get it done, you know, so I guess you can you can say that uh, they, they're efficient, you know, they're pretty efficient. No power struggles or anything like that? No, I don't think there's any power struggles. I mean, you know, maybe Alex and Brent argue, argue a little bit, but, you know, that's, that's always the way it is. I mean, it's never, you know, if everybody agrees, then... It'd just be too easy. That's just not the way it works. Right. I like that idea too. Put that right there. It paints it up perfectly. It's fucking sick. before my input so you know I don't meet a lot of resistance unless you know somebody feels very adamant about a part it's it's no it's not like oh man I gotta work with them or oh man I you know you know I'm dreading being able to communicate with them I mean you just gotta lay it out and say it and if you they don't like it then whatever you know you tried you know it's I mean yeah sure I'm running a session but it's not like I'm the be all end all of the of the parts, you know, I'm just another opinion. You know, that's mm -hmm. Like you'd have to go chat. Yeah. Uh, but really, really you want to go, dan, I'm da 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 so Alex found this guy named Brett Molzer, who owns a studio here in town called 77 Recording. And we found that it has an amazing drum room there where we get awesome sounds. And so we started tracking drums and he really digs our new material. And so the relationship really worked out. Whenever we moved to the new studio, we basically just wanted to upgrade everything and go a lot more analog, get a lot more preamps, a lot of varying preamps, 
and we got some 1073s, some 1081s, uh, some Calrec 1161s, all killer preamps. The board has 48 API preamps in it, which are killer for a lot of drum stuff. Uh, what else is back there? Picked up another Bracasti reverb, so we got four channels of that now. Uh, still got all our old reverbs that we use all the time. Uh, a lot of stuff to reamp guitars. Going to pick up a Kemper thing here pretty soon. Everybody's going to those modeling things, so uh, pretty excited about everything that's going on. Well, the drum room, we, we really took a lot of advice from a lot of people, and Mark kind of chipped in on that, and the acoustics guy, Gavin Haverstick, he kicked in. And I wanted just tall ceilings, big open room, you know, where we could get some good room sounds to throw on tape and stuff. So we kept the ceilings at 14 feet, and the room's like uh, 28 by 38, I think. And... So you can really get some distance in the mics and get a big room sound that, that you can actually use on tape, which a lot of times at some studios you have to uh, you have to put it in with reverb, with room sounds and stuff, but, but this is pretty cool. Uh, we met through a common friend, Jonathan Munyer. He was uh, an old friend of Alex's, and we uh, basically, he and I met in Florida and got to talking about Alex and Deliver Us From Evil and how... Mark was going to uh, start working on an album with him and then Alex got in touch with me in my old studio and we got it worked out. Mark flew up from Orlando to uh, to just spend two days in the studio to record three or four songs. I think we ended up getting like four or five done and then uh, things just kept going and going, kind of kept in the loop, became good buddies with Alex and uh, they came in a couple weeks ago and recorded some more drum tracks. I thought that felt good. We've only cut drums in the studio and Alex is nuts. So he, he thinks we can get everything done in three hours. And he almost did, but uh, but it was cool, it was crazy. We got four was it four songs done in like maybe seven hours at the most and that was a set up well, a little bit more than that was set up but it was crazy <laughs> Mark coming in was just cool because he's one of the top names in the, in the metal scene these days and uh, it was cool for him to come in and just kind of dive in and just get to work because they only had a limited time at the old studio too and uh, you could just tell he's, he's, he's the man when it comes to this stuff and him and Alex working together they just it's just something special you can just tell that they there's no there's no BS involved. It's all straightforward and just knocking it out. And they, uh, they did a hell of a job. It was pretty impressive watching them work together. Uh, was a bunch. It was, it was just ca the cadence was different. You know what I mean? Uh, on this one, like it, it used, it used <laughs> to go. Yeah, like he came over and was fucking with it. Yeah, you all right? <laughs> cool. Alex actually tracked all the drums after getting levels and everything. Tracked all the songs in one day, which is pretty amazing. So we're really lucky to have a guy that's as disciplined and has the chops that he has.
that, we come back to Evansville, get ready to do levels on guitars. And so the next day or two, we we're up and running. And also, uh, we're lucky to have John, that he has the chops that he has, that he was just knocking it out really, really fast. Ingve, dude. Just think Ingve. you work with them again of course no, I always I always love working with them it's it's fun it's cool you know we have a good time and stuff moves fast and you know I mean it's just you know it's, it's easy it's fun good chemistry I'm put in a position where it's like okay you're not at home just writing you got to brainstorm now you're, you know this is it you got to come up with it now you know what do you got Those will go good together. Yeah, I think so too. I just throw out random ideas and usually he kind of look at me like, you know, huh, that's a good idea, I didn't think of that. So, uh, like I said, no intimidation, it, it really was pretty smooth, so. I mean, I know they've been around for a few years, but I mean, you know, their songwriting's still developing and, and, you know, and still really, still really coming into their own, you know, so it's, it's good that they can communicate the way they do, you know. I think people will dig it, I mean, it's, um, you know, it's not reinventing the wheel, but it's, uh, you know, it's fun to listen to. It's got some great riffs. It's going to sound killer. I mean, it's just that it'll be a devastating sound for, you know, people to get into. You know, if you 
if you dig it, you dig it. If you don't, you don't. I mean, you know, I think the band it makes music for themselves, like most bands do. And you know, I mean, I help them make something that I enjoy listening to, and that's what it's all about. Holy shit balls! Tropoles. Sludorp. Tyler Turden. Predis, what is it? Predis Jeez. Soy name Boo. Soy name Boo. Doo doo dolls. Doo doo dolls. Wookie. Man. Man of mystery. Wookie master. Video. <laughs> it was the Wookiee Master. Oh, <laughs> Lord. <laughs> Anytime working with Mark, it's always positive, it's always good. Um, and like I said, we, you know, we don't have to spend a long time with him to get anything, to, you know, to get to get our stuff done because, like I said, he's, he's so efficient and he, he, he understands what needs to be done, how it needs to be done, and, and you know, He's just gonna keep working and going at it until he gets it all finished. And How big is your cock? Huge. <laughs> I think they're doing good because I mean, you know, it's like they, you know, it's like they made an EP with me and they made their money back, they made a little money on it, and it's like you know, keep doing that, and they have a good following going. I think, I think that, you know, they, they you know, they do think of this band as a small business, which it is. I mean, not to take away from the art of it, you know, because people, you know, always kind of gasp a little bit when you mention music and money, but it's like, you know, they're a machine. Like, you know, they, they're not losing money, they're making it, and, you know, here we are the second time around, and we're able to do this and have fun, and, and, and nobody's, you know, strapped for cash, and nobody's this or that, you know, and we live in a shitty economy, but they're like, you know, they're doing it, and that's cool, you know, so I mean, they, you know, they keep that up, they keep writing songs, and they keep keep running the band the way it is, I think it's, it's really cool, you know, not a lot of, not a lot of bands can do that, you know, I mean, I know bands on labels that run out of money, you know, and these guys are, they have merchandise, and they have, you know, a record, you know, so, you know, or, or an EP out, and they're doing another one, it's cool. I was just glad to be there, kind of soak in what it was like to work with a producer at that level, and it was just really cool, I was really glad to be a part of it, and uh, so we we encountered some different problems and everything, just making it work. But we did what we had to do and got it working. We even had to uh, set up a couple Skype sessions to fill in uh, vocals and work on that. So we we used the resources we had available and it and it worked out. As far as having a uh, having a fan base in Evansville, it's it's kind of crazy because. You know, like when I first moved to Indiana, I never would have thought that there was anything going like this going on here because when I first moved here, I never really saw anything, you know, like you'd see bands and things and, you know, they've got their friends that come to their shows and things like that. But then actually being in this band and, and, and getting out in the scene and actually realizing that there is a scene here, you know, and then over the years we've grown this scene. like. I don't know, it's just, it, it kind of amazes me that, that there's just so many people in this area that really, you know, dig what we're doing and then a lot of these other bands that are here and dig what they're doing too, you know, and that we can create these kinds of shows and this kind of atmosphere and, and have all these people, um, you know, and that come out and stuff. It's just, it is, it's kind of, it's kind of crazy to, to think that in a small place like this, that there is that kind of a... a I'll say a need because people really in this place they do need that like they they want it
worked really hard the last six or seven years to pick up a lot of new people and um, you know we've got people with our logo tattooed on we got people that have painted our logo on their van and their vehicles and stuff and so I mean to see stuff like that it's like it move it's really moving you know what I mean like it's one of those things where I can't believe I'm a part of a group that could do that so you know we've come a long way and I'm really proud and really happy with all the guys that I work with and I, I think that we've uh, we're really on to something and if we keep it up man there's only we can only make a headway and more progress so we're hoping that everything we do with Mark Lewis and everything we're doing in Evansville really, you know, picks up and we can take off somewhere with it, you know, and it all, it all starts somewhere. It's, it's a big snowball effect. you got to start small and, and go big and, you know, uh, when your resources are limited and your money's limited, you just got to scrounge and put as much of your effort and your time and your money into what you love and you do what you got to do because you love to do it. So. That's where we're at, you know, as far as building this scene and working with Mark Lewis. It's a great experience and we're just all lucky. We're already working on more songs. We're already working on stuff for a new album. Um, plus we'll have these, you know, the videos and stuff or whatever. And, uh, you know, just trying to put out as much as we can, as, as often as we can. To let, you know, let people know we're, we're still producing and that, you know, you don't want to let people forget about you. And so as of right now, that's kind of like where we're at. And uh, we're getting ready to play the show that you're about to see on the, on the camera. So thanks for stopping by and checking us out. See you in a little bit.